Hey. Good morning. My goodness. Everybody calm down. Hey, listen. I love you. But who did that? You see that? That's not nice. It's not nice. No, listen. No. Okay, you time to eat. All right, let's go eat. Take it easy. Morning, donks. Morning, morning. Hello. Morning, everybody. Chad, Adler Farms. Uh, just a little customization on the truck. No big deal. All right. Let's see who's actually hungry here. Oh, by the way, it was 64 degrees yesterday. Today it's 32 with it feels like a 24. It's a good time. All right. I think it might be time to start a new bucket. All right. Just stay where you're at. Be patient. Everybody's in the right spot. What y'all doing? Morning. How y'all doing? Oh. Woo. What's up? Don't hang on, buddy. I gotta dump this out. There we go. Hang on, we got a, we got a dog issue. There's a rogue dog somewhere, where's it at? So my neighbor, hang on, let me text, let me text her back. All right, so the dog is way up there playing with the neighbor's dog. The problem is I've never seen the dog that's up there. Neither is my neighbor. And it is running along the fence with her dogs. Just to clarify, we do have issues with dogs, and it might seem like a lot. I don't know if it's a lot or a little. I've never lived in the country. Not like this. What we're gonna do, first, I'm gonna give you a hug if you don't get out of there. I'm gonna give you a hug if you don't get out of there. It's out, okay. Bruce is getting a hug. You guys ready for this? Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. What you doing? What you doing? Little donk. What's up, buddy? Bruce? Yeah, there. Come on. Get out of it. <laughs> Sorry, man. Come here, you little stinker. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, my goodness. Bruce, there's a sheep and goat sale tonight at my favorite auction. I'm gonna find you a girl. All right, I don't mean to be passive about that dog, but I know where it's at. Mama, that white alpaca right there, she actually just alerted to it. She's got a, uh, she's got an obnoxiously high-pitched call. And if I can get it on video, I'll do it. I know I've shown it before, but man, it's like a, just, just like that. I told you it was obnoxious and high pitched. We're gonna run up here and see where this dog's at. My neighbor's got cameras. She works down the road in the next town, but she's got cameras just like we do. Something set off the camera, so she checked it, and sure enough, it's a dog. Before I was messing with Bruce to touch on what I was talking about with dogs, we do about every three months have an issue with a dog. Sorry, I'm trying to stay in frame. We do have an issue with a dog about every three months. Some random mutt shows up. Uh, the other two in the time, let's see. Yeah, a couple months ago, the two that I showed that came to our gate, 
they wound up belonging to the neighbors like a couple miles away. How in the world them dogs got over here, I don't know. But they were chasing our alpacas. We did make them go away. We didn't, they, we, we made sure the neighbor came and got them. That's where they went. The last two dogs that were here did try and get in and harass the alpacas, but they had collars on. I had footage of it, it's a whole video. They had collars on, it was somebody's pet, man. And it just drives me nuts when people's dogs get out like that, especially out here, you know. There's no animal control. There's nobody you can call. You can try and catch them and trap them, but usually, especially when it's somebody's pet, They've got out, that dog has gotten out and it's never been out and it just runs everywhere. And of course there's always the danger of, is this dog nice? Is this dog gonna more or less bite my face off? We always get those comments where people are like, man, see if you can catch it, see if it's got a collar, see if it's microchipped. Man, I don't know where y'all grew up, but my parents told me, we lived in a very safe neighborhood. My parents built the houses in a couple of the subdivisions we lived in. But my parents told us, you never walk up to a stray dog, collar or not. You don't know that dog's history. You don't know if that dog's been attacked somewhere else and it's in fight mode. You never know. You don't ever just walk up to a dog. Now y'all know my lovely wife. She thinks she can pet every animal. <laughs> you never know there, but she knows enough to know that other animals can sense other animals' motives and stresses and fears. If you've got an animal that's alerting to something, chances are the animal it's alerting to is not okay. It's not in the right mode, mood, whatever you wanna call it. Let's walk up here and I'm gonna be real careful what I show just cause there's mailboxes and whatnot. But let's see if we can find this dog up here. You guys behave. Yeah, and sorry for the views. I'm just trying to protect privacy of privacy of my neighbors more than anything. Another issue we have though, even if the dog is safe or belongs down the road, my neighbor has dogs and she's done an amazing job using containment systems and electric fences. And she is an animal lover. However, when you get these stray dogs that run up and down your fence, and want to tease and taunt your dogs that never get out, it can cause issues because then your dog gets out. And once a dog gets out, it typically stays out until you train it not to leave with some kind of corrective action like a shot collar or whatever. Sorry it's windy up here, but see that? My neighbor's got an electric fence to keep her dogs from digging out. See it. I also don't see her dogs. All right, I can't find the dog, but we do have a picture of it on our camera when it went across my gate. So I'll put that right here so you know I'm not making up the story about the dog. Now I know 99% of you don't understand. I don't make stuff up like that, but that 1% will be like, hey, he's nipped it. Listen, kick rocks. And the only thing I'm trying to make sure of is my neighbor's got two dogs that roam free on, I don't know how much land she has, but she's got two dogs that roam free and I don't see them. So I'm trying to make sure that they stayed in the pen and the other dog didn't coax them out. And then we'll uh, resume chores for the day. Water's not froze, so it's not that cold. Look at this hungry, hungry hippo right here. I'm gonna move my truck before he gets any closer. I can't believe she horned my truck. Man, oh man. I don't see either one of her house dogs. So it's possible, like I said, she's working down the road, but there's a person at the house that lets her dogs in and out sometimes. It's possible that they let their dogs in when they saw the stray. I also have a feeling that you guys haven't heard a word I've been saying because it's windy. We'll find out in editing. That's always a good time. Somebody's inevitably gonna say, do you have your pow pow? And that's because I don't, I think pew pew is kind of silly. Like it doesn't sound very 
gonna defend my farm. Pew pew, pew pew. I'm gonna defend my farm. Pow pow, pow pow. Just like that. Yes, I always have something to defend the farm with. Very, very nearby. And it's always borderline obnoxious, the amount of pow pows I have. America. Just never know out here, man. And too often, you know, I'm on those Facebook groups where, you know, it's like lost pets in, I don't even know what county we're in. And so many times, man, people post and they're like, has anyone seen this dog? Or does this dog belong to anybody? And everybody's like, no. And you know, there's just enough room out here that there are wild dogs or dogs that just roam and they can go undetected for a while until it's cold and they need food or water and they start looking for easy meals like chickens. And then of course they see an animal they've never seen before, like an alpaca. And they're like, <gasps> chew toy. Mm -mm. Man, it's windy and cold, daggone. We had three or four nice days of like 55, 60 degree weather. And then yesterday was the warmest day and it was 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but it rained all day. Wow. I don't mind the rain. I can handle it. It also started raining. I know you guys love when I talk about the weather like I'm old. Started raining about 3 a.m. So by the time I got out here at 730, it's soaking wet everywhere. You can't move the tractor. You'll tear up your pastures. Your Anything you've been trying to do, wherever you take your truck and drive over stuff, you're going to tear it up. So just didn't do anything. I actually hung out in the cabin and edited and emailed a bunch of you guys back. That's what I did. <laughs> More water, always more water. It is amazing to me how much I put off buying these quick disconnects. And let me just tell you something. If you don't have these QDs, you should get some. You're, you're being silly. Like I said, I waited. I sent my dad a link to buy some a while back and I never ordered any and he did. And when his came in, he was like, man, you got to get some of these. I can't believe I waited so long. They're awesome, Bruce. They're awesome, buddy. What do you think? What kind of girl you want tonight? You want one about your size? Well, we should probably make sure she's your size. You know, your first girlfriend. Your first girlfriend's a little shorter. I don't know about you guys, but she doesn't look as pregnant to me as you guys say she does. Like, at all. So, anyway, just my two cents, but you can see how finicky she is. She will not come over here. So. Oh my goodness. I well, guess I'm gonna. Hey, you know you can use the shorter one. It's right there. There you go. That a girl. Get it, get it. Swim team's coming. Little donk. What's up, buddy? A donk. How you doing? Is that your buddy, Badonk a donk? Kind of protector from that guy? Oh boy. Broad daylight, and you scratch my truck. Goodness. They're so strong. I hear something. So my neighbor's dogs are barking, which is not uncommon, but the alpacas aren't alerting, so I'm not too worried about it. Babysit this water trough, and then we'll go check again. How you guys doing? Huh? You're looking pretty. Neighbor's dogs have been located. Some warning shots were issued. It is what it is. They were definitely warning shots. I'd tell you guys if they weren't. He made it way back here and there's just no reason for that. So we made him leave. I'm just making sure he stays going. But anyway, inevitably we always get comments from people. Why didn't you show this? Why didn't you show that? Well. In case you didn't know, 
YouTube is my workplace. And if you can't walk into where you work and talk about running stray dogs off your property, then you need to understand I can't either. So, and there's just no reason to show it. There's no need to whatever. I assure you they were warning shots. Dog is very aware he or she is not welcome. I didn't even get close enough to check. My neighbor's got calves on the ground. Actually, on both sides, our neighbors have calves on the ground. We have alpacas. We have, I believe, a donkey that's going to have a foal sometime. And, yeah, we're still going to get the girls preg checked, so we just have no need for that kind of nonsense on the farm. Right, Bruce? That's right. <laughs> Yesterday, I was out here doing a little pow-pow practice. And I do it so much that these animals don't even flinch. My animals. They don't even... I'll take that back. I think the dog's gone. Little donk just sounded off, so... He saw something. Because they've all been fed. And once they've all been fed, he doesn't just make noise for no reason. Something's out there. But we'll drive back up top and look. I do have to collect chicken eggs. Because with it being this cold, they may freeze and we don't want that. Right, June? All right, chickens. Let's see how many eggs you laid today. Let's make Grandpa Adler Farms envious of our birds. Come on. Right. Excuse me, pardon me. Excuse me. All right, it's definitely colder. It's definitely colder because there's a lot of scratch missing, which means they got hungry. Thursdays are usually the days I do go get scratch. Boy, somebody. Somebody's draining the main vein. Yo, you can't eat this. This ain't for you. This ain't, you, you even eat that? Look out. That's not your sack, I know. Eggs, eggs, eggs. Bam! <laughs> Holy cow. Listen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Thanks, buddy. Eleven eggs. I don't even have eleven chickens. Or wait. Yeah, I do. I have exactly 11. That means everybody's laying. All right, you guys ready? There we go. The rest come home with us. I sure do. You guys didn't hear it, but... Little Donk actually sounded off again. So I would say that picture you guys saw in the thumbnail dog was traveling this direction and I would say that's where he's from because he was making a beeline down here like he hadn't been there before he was stopping but he was like a busy little bee if you will I, that's what I call a beeline anyway tried to retreat back to his home and it alerted little donk again so let's put these eggs up and go check just to make sure they act like they're starving let's get him some cubes my goodness today i think i started this sentence but i didn't finish it today is a feed day i'm gonna go get some cubes and yeah lots more cubes hi there hi there all right love donkeys man love them love them love them Hi, buddy. So everybody always asks us why these coyotes, excuse me, Lucy, why these coyotes don't uh, get in the traps or whatever. Well, little donk, come here. Nope. He goes where his girlfriend goes. He's a loyal fella. Anyway, look, he's missing. He's missing half his ear. See how they're all scarred up? Those are from the farm that he came from. The, wherever he was at. But I think Little Donk's ear 
Um, you ever seen cauliflower ear? Like I'm not a huge MMA fan. Um, I don't, I don't dislike it, but I don't like, I don't have any idea who any main fighters are or anything like that. But anyway, I may have taken some Brazilian Jitsu once or twice in my life. And by that, I mean two or three times in a guy's garage rolling around, getting sweaty. I said what I said. You ever seen cauliflower ears? That's where your ear turns in from like pressure and stuff. And all your MMA guys have that. You can tell they do MMA and they don't wear headgear. That's why wrestlers wear headgear so they can avoid that. I have a theory that coyotes look in our pasture and they see donks chipped, notched cauliflower ear, and they're like, sorry man, sorry. Didn't know who you were messing with. And then they leave. There are six traps along that fence back there and there's nothing in them, nothing. He's made it clear they're not welcome here. Y'all tired? I'm tired. All right, so, man. We've been in touch with Ray and I, and Ray's at work, but she's very involved with this stuff, okay? We sat up last night, and I actually drew this, which is similar to the house plan, which we've linked down below. Uh, I can't share an image of it because somebody owns that image, but you can go click on it and look at it. We arranged some things. I drew this, I made it fit better to our lifestyle. Reached out to Gary and Cassie at Walker Farm Fam because they built their house and I like something that they did, which is when you come in through their back door, they basically have two back doors on their back porch. Um, and when you go through one of them, you go right into a mudroom, laundry room, there's a kitchen sink, kitchen sink, there's a farm sink for whatever. And it leads into the master closet which then in turn leads into their master bathroom. So like when Gary's been out working or Cassie even, and been out working cows or whatever, they can get to the shower without going through the main house. Another door that goes right into the main house, main living area. So we wanted to kind of model something like that. I say all that to say, and she came up with this last night and it's pretty stinking good. Where's the other, here it is. So if you guys didn't know, this is graph paper and each square on this drawing equals one square foot. And then I started it over here and did each square is two square feet. So you can kind of keep things in perspective and you can fit more on there. My mom, and if she's in here, she'll vouch at this. My mom has built houses, mom and dad, with subcontractors acting as the general contractors off of graph paper. So yeah, it can absolutely be done. You don't have to spend $1,000 on plans off a website. That is silly. We are actively seeking bids and don't judge these measurements because sometimes I'll get in here and be like, man, 16 feet in a pantry slash mudroom. That's, that's massive. However, there will be some things. We're gonna have a garage sticking off the side. We've talked about, where's that garage plan? We've talked about putting Case in a room above the garage if we don't use the cabin. Giving the two little boys a room attached to the house on top of the bedroom that's already on the house, that kind of thing. But it all depends on a couple of bids that we get. Don't judge, don't judge that either if you know what you're doing at all because if we put Case up above the garage, uh, it's a narrow garage. We're only gonna have a one car because we will build a shop someday out on the road where we can park my truck, my tractor, four wheelers, all that stuff. So we just need Ray to have a garage spot. But when you go up the garage wall, let's say it's a uh, 10 foot garage ceiling. And when you look at putting like a bathroom and washroom and stuff like that up there for Case, so he has his own. Remember, this garage roof is gonna have a peak running right down the middle of it. Well, at some point your walls, this is hard to do behind the camera. At some point your walls are gonna start 
tapering in to make the pitch of the roof. So you can't really put anything in a corner, if that makes sense. We've just got some finagling to do. We have three bids on concrete work. And it's not that if somebody hit us with a smoking bid right now, they were just like, here you go, I'll do it. It's not that we're going to run out and just do it. We need to get an idea of what we want. So let's say, for example, we put in a bid for, I'm just going to use easy numbers here. And we're not, these are not real numbers. These are made up in my head right now on the spot. Let's say we wanted a 50 by 50 square basement with 10 foot walls. Okay. That's excavation. That's footings. That's poured formed walls, 10 feet high. So you get a nine foot ceiling. And we're not super worried in the basement about having an eight foot ceiling because just the boys are going to be down there. But let's say all of that comes in at 30 grand. I have no idea. Now, let me tell you something. There's no way it would be 30 grand for a 50 by 50. I'm just using easy numbers. However, if it comes in at 30 grand or 32, let's say the budget's 30,000. I don't feel like enough channels talk about this when they're building their house. I just want you guys to know. And a lot of things will defer um, depending on where you live and how readily available things are. Okay. For example, if you're building this in the middle of Alaska where Ray was born, concrete's probably a little more expensive than it is here. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they build everything's out of woods. It's all log cabins. I don't know. We get a bid for $32,000 and our budget was $30,000 for a full basement. When you do a full basement and the reason people do it is you can take a 40 by 30 plan and immediately double your living space because you have a basement. You've immediately gone from 40 by 30, which is 1,200 square feet, to 2,400 square feet, and it's livable, okay? So let's say the bid comes in at 30,000 or 32,000, but we budgeted for 30,000. Let's say that comes in at $20,000 for 2,400 square foot pad. The problem is that pad is gonna actually be more expensive in the long run because you gotta put a roof over all that. Whereas with a basement, you don't have to, okay? The basement, it's all underneath one roof, same amount of square footage. So in exchange, you save money even though you might spend more up front. So it's very, a lot of moving parts when you're building a house, okay? Give your contractors and people that do this for a living a little more credit for the good ones. There's some terrible ones out there. If a guy knows what he's doing or a gal, it can take a while to do things like this. So we have a bid out for like concrete block foundation, which would be a crawl space. I am going to get a bid for a slab because it is doable. And I know people sometimes get scared of slabs, but here's how you get around issues with slabs and water and things that are buried in the concrete and breaking, okay? A sewer line is the only thing that has to be in the concrete slab. You can run everything else overhead. You can, all your water, all your electric, it can all be run overhead. Or what you can put in the concrete is four inch schedule 40 PVC, and you can run your water lines through that, your electric through that. That way, if there ever is an issue, you just pull it. You know, I ran cable in my, in my previous uh, IT days, if you will. And we always put in conduit or some kind of path to pull that wire or run new wire. We have a bid out for a block foundation, a basement, and a concrete pad. And we're going to do what's best for us. I'm not saying we're going to break ground tomorrow, but this is much, much, much closer than anything we've ever been. And we're very, very excited. So it is 1 p.m. in the afternoon. I got to make chili because that's what everybody wanted to eat tonight. And I got a phone call that I got to get on like a conference about something cool coming up. Oh, and wait, wait, wait. Are you ready? Wait, hang on. See this, uh, see this camera right here? By the way, this is my catch-all drawer. It's up on top of the uh, refrigerator because Ray's not tall enough to see it. I don't, I don't know if Ray will watch this tonight, but she has no idea, but I bought an animal. I did, I bought an animal. I bought a really pretty animal. And I go pick it up here in a couple of days. So super cool, she has no idea. So this one's for me. This is like a dream animal I've always wanted. I wanted this animal and it's a great price. And it comes from an awesome farm. I gotta hide because I think she can see on that camera what I'm doing in here, which she should be working, young lady, but when she's on her lunch break, which is right now, she can tune in and see what I'm doing. So, oh, you guys wanna see how I make chili? Hang on a second.
people ask Daddy a lot what we do to food prep. Yeah. And I think it's funny because you know what I do to food prep? What do you do? We raise our own beef. Mm -hmm. And we stock ingredients for chili, including saltines and mustard and shredded cheese. Oh, yeah. What else do you do to it? Um, I put a Tony's Creole like. Show me. Let's see it. Hold on. I'll be right back. You keep your seasoning in your room that no one else uses. Yeah, but I don't, I'm not taking risks. Well, let's see it. Didn't you ask? That was on your Christmas list. That was on my Christmas list. I have oh two my lists. goodness. Well, you need to thank Grandma for getting you seasoning for Christmas. I did. It's a spicy kind. Just a little bit. I'm gonna sneeze. Don't you just dare. <laughs> mustard on it? I do put mustard on it. Mustard. But I need... I need the mustard. That's where it's at right there. Oh yeah. No shredded cheese though. I don't like shredded cheese. Yeah, I do sometimes. I don't see it. It's probably gonna be hot. Yeah, it is. It's smoking hot. Are you sure you wanna do that? Yep. <laughs> so you know what's funny? The two little boys don't actually eat very much of this. Adler will. Carter won't at all, because it's spicy. Uh, Ray will eat it. But really, when we make chili, it's just for Case and I, and it's fantastic. We get it's like, amazing. yeah, it's awesome. Because it's like, it's like two pounds of beef. Two pounds of beef. And we both eat about a pound. Yep. Yeah, this chili will be gone. We rarely, rarely have leftover chili. Remember what I told you this morning on the way to school? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you say it like that? I didn't even finish my sentence. I bought something to make sure that the coyotes are never oh, going yeah. to be a problem. Yeah. And I pick it up tomorrow at 11. And it's gonna be awesome. There's actually two of them. I maybe I may just get them both. I may get them both at the back of the property. And I guarantee, I doubt we even have trespassing humans ever with this thing standing in the backyard. Yep, you guys will have to stay tuned. Y'all be good. Don't work too hard. Don't make it weird. Pray for good bids on house plans. God bless. <laughs>